The oldest jog on record dates back to 1900 BC. And yes, it was a fart jog. It goes like this. Something which has never occurred since time immemorial, a woman did not fart in her husband's lap. Don't feel bad if you don't get it. Trust me, you're not the only one. Take a ring size seat because in today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're going to look into the life of a man that put the art into fart with the story of Le Petomine, aka Joseph Pujol. Joseph Pujol was born on the 1st of June 1857 in Marseille, France. As a young child, he was a quiet and shy boy. He seemed to almost blend into the background. Some kids in his class were good at maths, others were good at sports, but Pujol didn't really seem to excel in anything in particular. However, that all changed when he discovered he had an extraordinary ability. The ability to seemingly fart on command, a trick he began to take great pride in to his teacher's dismay. He was able to bring the entire classroom to hysterics without as much as having to utter a word. A very valuable skill to have for a quiet, shy young boy. Later on in life, he got a job as a baker in a local bakery. Here, he would sometimes entertain customers using his special ability, imitating musical instruments and claiming to be playing them from behind the counter. A joke that was only sometimes well received. Other times, the disgruntled customers would simply storm out of the store. He made his first official stage debut, age 30, in 1887, and it was an instant classic. His stage name was Le Petamine, a combination of the French verb peto, meaning to fart, and the suffix men, meaning maniac, creating the literal translation of fartomaniac. Also, known as a flatulist or fartiste. His stage show involved him imitating musical instruments, cannon fire and thunderstorms. As the stage curtain rose, Pujol would step out of the shadows dressed in a fine red coat and black satin breeches, a pair of white gloves held in his hands and sporting a trademark handlebar moustache. The audience was completely unprepared for what lay ahead. One of his favourite numbers, a poem in rhyme about a stroll through a farmyard accompanied by farting renditions of animal sounds. As the uncontrollable laughter erupted from the crowd, it quickly spread through the theatre. Soon, men and women both completely paralysed with laughter, with tears streaming down their face. A number of women reportedly passed out, unable to breathe in their tightly bound courses, and they had to be escorted from the theatre by nurses. He developed his stage act locally for about five years. Then, following his increasing success, he moved to Paris, and in 1892, he began performing at the infamous Moulin Rouge for the likes of Edward, the Prince of Wales, King Leopold II, and father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud. His other stage antics included him blowing out candles and performing renditions of popular songs, even the French national anthem. Unfortunately, his success here was cut short because in 1894, the managers of the Moulin Rouge fired Peugeot, then proceeded to sue him for breach of contract after an impromptu public performance he gave as a fundraiser to help out one of his friends. The Moulin Rouge won the case and Peugeot had to pay 3,000 francs, a measly sum in compared to his usual fee of 20,000 francs per show. In hindsight, this was a disastrous move by the managers of the Moulin Rouge as it led to Peugeot setting up his very own travelling show, which he called the Theatre Pompadour. And just like that, the Moulin Rouge lost their star act. Over the following decade, 
Pojol refined his art form, adding comedy routines such as impressions of famous people, his very own demonstration of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and smoking two cigarettes at once. I'll leave that one to your imagination. With the outbreak of World War I, Pujol retired from performing and returned to his bakery in Marseille, leaving behind an enduring legacy and inspiring countless books, musicals, plays, songs and films. Joseph Pujol died in 1945, aged 88, and was buried in the cemetery of La Valette du Var, France. When a medical school in Paris requested the privilege of examining the late Lepetamine's famous internal organs, the family declined, stating, there are some things in this life which simply must be treated with reverence. Contrary to popular belief, Pujol was not actually the first performing flatulist. Intentional passing of gas and its use as entertainment for others appear to have been somewhat well documented. In the City of God, written about halfway through the first century AD, Saint Augustine mentions some performers who possessed such command of their bowels they can break wind continuously at will, so as to produce the effects of singing. As other examples, medieval Ireland had professional fighters called brigatori, and the Japanese Kamakura period had professional performers of fart dances. It's also reported that even England's King Henry II hired a court jester called Roland the Farter to perform for the king's court every Christmas. His payment was 30 acres of land and the Hemingstone Manor in Suffolk. That being said, it's clear that Pujol had the most success. He left a legacy that spanned decades and has become almost folklore over time. A made-up character so unusual he couldn't have possibly have been real. Multiple musicals have been written based on his life, such as The Fartiste and A Passing of Wind. In addition, Pujol was even written into David Lee's 2007 rework of the 1953 Broadway play Can Can. He has also been portrayed in several films, such as the 1979 film Le Petamine, the 1983 Italian movie Il Petamine, and also his character briefly appears as one of the performers in Baz Luhrmann's 2001 blockbuster Moulin Rouge. He was also referenced in Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddles, and in the 1984 film Up the Creek, he serves as the namesake of La Petamine University. Not bad for an 88-year-old baker that's been dead for over 75 years. And there we have it, the story of La Petamine, Joseph Pujol. Were you blown away? Do you think fart jokes are as funny as Sigmund Freud did? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but stay unusual as usual. You can check out the most recent video by clicking here. And if you click here, you'll see the video that YouTube thinks you should be watching next. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.